Isaiah 28, verses 14 through 18. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men, who rule the people which is in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He who believes shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. Now, if you notice, this word was addressed to the scornful men. These were the political leaders of Judah. And God was saying to them, Now, because you have said, they had said this, uh, or actually they did it, and uh, they were saying it with their actions. We made a covenant with death, and with hell are we in agreement. Now what that means is that the Assyrians were coming against Judah, and instead of crying out to God, repenting of sin, and crying out to God for his help, they went to Egypt for help. And that was actually what the covenant with death and with hell was it was their agreement with Egypt to help them in the time of need. Now they said when that overflowing scourge, that's referring to the Assyrians, the Syrian army, when that will come, they said it will not come unto us because their faith and their trust was in Egypt. They said we made this pact with Egypt and because of that, this a uh, judgment that you are telling us about, Isaiah, it won't come unto us because we made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. It was at that point, you know, God could have been very angry at their scorning, their mocking, the word of judgment, the word of warning from the prophet Isaiah. But instead, what God did at that point was he tried to show them, look, I have the answer, and it is in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you will just trust in him and not in man, that you will, be, you will come through this, this uh, judgment, and you will be in safety when it comes on the land. He, and because they did not listen to the word of the Lord, God said that your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Your agreement with hell shall not stand. This hail, which is typifying judgment, is going to sweep away your refuge of lies. And the waters are going to overflow your hiding place. Now we want to go to Isaiah 28, 16 and zero in on that verse because that will be our main text therefore thus saith the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste here we have therefore thus saith the Lord God. Oh, how we need a word from God. We need God to speak in the day and hour in which we are living. Here's God speaking. And what he was doing was trying to show them the true foundation of hope and trust for security from death, hell, or judgment. He was trying to convince the scornful men of their vain and false confidence. He was also trying to comfort the people of God because they heard the words of judgment and they were thinking, are we going to be spared or are we going to uh, uh, fall also with the nation? But God was 
trying to relieve their minds and give them this beautiful promise that will of deliverance in the midst of the denunciation of judgment upon the wicked. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, O oh, God always has an answer to to the, a need to, when there are problems facing you God always has the need the answer therefore thus saith the Lord God here was his answer to the scornful defiance by the rulers of Egypt of the prophets threatenings not with their words so much but with their deeds here they they made this covenant with Egypt and they thought to themselves that no matter what comes, we will be safe. But to this contemptuous and false reliance, God answers and he answers with a, a picture, a vision, a turning toward the sure refuge that he has provided in contrast to their flimsy and false ones. He said, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone. Now notice he said, I lay. God is the one that's laying this foundation. And that foundation is consists of the promises of God in general. His word, his word is the foundation that your life my life must be found on. But it's also referring to the promise of Jesus Christ in particular. He is the stone which the builders rejected. He is the head of the corner, the cornerstone on which we must put our faith and trust. Alexander McLaren said, Jesus Christ is the foundation laid for all man's security against every tempest or assault. Oh, if tempests or assaults are coming, and they are, let me assure you, they are coming to the world. The only security against them is having Jesus Christ as the foundation of your life. Alexander McLaren also said, have we not, all of us, like the scornful men in Jerusalem, built our refuges on vain hopes, on creatural affections, on earthly possessions, on this, that, and the other false thing, all of which are to be swept away when the storm comes. Let me assure you, the storm is coming. The storm is coming. And the reason for this broadcast, this message, is to to examine yourself as a Christian. I'm talking to Christians now to see if you are like these scornful men. We can't be too critical of them because you need to ask yourself, well, am I building my refuge on vain hopes or earthly possessions or on this false thing or on that false thing? Am I doing it? Because if I am, whatever is not Jesus will be swept away when the storm comes. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. When he said lay in Zion, he was talking about in the kingdom of God or in the church in general on the earth. I'm laying for a foundation. I'm laying this firm foundation which nothing can move it. Nothing, the storms and the tempests of calamity cannot sweep it away. Oh, because God's laying it. God is laying. He's laying this foundation that will be unshaken, unmoved, and unmoved by all the assaults of the foes of God. Oh, it doesn't matter the enemies of God, how they throw their assaults at the people of God. Oh, but this foundation that God's laying, it will be unshaken and unmoved by the assaults of the foes of God. And all who are resting on it will be safe. It's founded on the rock, the rock Christ Jesus, and it will be secure amidst all the storms that might beat against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. 
God by the prophet was trying to awaken these scornful men out of their sleep. He was trying to show them the folly of their security and tell them upon what grounds they could be secure. And I believe in this broadcast that God is trying to awaken some of you under the sound of my voice. He's trying to show you the folly of your security, what you've been putting your faith and trust in in these final last hours and trying to tell you upon what ground grounds you will be secure. This is the foundation that God is laying in contrast to the insecure refuge and false ground of confidence that the nobles were relying on. The prophets putting forth that sure rock on which complete dependence must be placed. This foundation is firm as the eternal rock and it has its roots in God's everlasting nature. It typifies the unchanging verity of God. Alexander McLaren said, Brethren, the one foundation on which building we can build secure and safe as well as secure is that foundation which is laid in the incarnation, death, resurrection, and ascension of the Son of God. The foundation of all our security is Jesus Christ. And then he said, build upon that. And neither the tempest of earthly calamities, changes, disappointments, sorrows, losses shall ever touch us. Oh, let me ask you, you know, you say, Connie, I'm saved. I believe in Jesus and him crucified. But let me ask you, the areas of your life, are they all founded on Jesus Christ? Oh, how about your thinking, your opinions, your belief, your knowledge? Is it coming from God? Is it based on God and his, his word? How about your knowledge of God? Where does it come from? Your knowledge of yourself, your knowledge of what's required of you, your knowledge of the present and the future. Are you getting it from God? Or are you getting it from some man? Let me give you an illustration. I found this in my studies. A czar of Russia in the olden days was crazy enough to build a great palace upon the ice blocks of the Neva. I assume the Neva is the river. And when the spring came and the foundations melted, the house full of delights and luxury sank beneath the river. Now you think of this Tsar of Russia and you have to think this man lost his mind. Didn't he think ahead of time? I mean, didn't he think, hey, wait a minute, the spring's going to come and thaw all this ice. No, he didn't think of it. And the thing is, he built it and uh, he took great delight in it. And probably people all around said, oh, this is so awesome. This is beautiful. But before you find fault with the Tsar of Russia, let me ask you, are you building your life on ice blocks? You know, the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And sometimes you can build and you could do things and you think God's leading you. You could maybe go on this tangent or be distracted and go this way. And you have to ask yourself, did God tell you to do that? Because if he didn't, you're building on ice blocks. And I can tell you, the spring is coming. The fires of God's judgment are coming. And all that which God did not lay, did not build, is coming down. Okay, God said, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. And that literally means a stone of proof. And the reason why is because it stands every test, but it also tries those who come in contact with it. It stands every test. We have generations of departed saints that can testify that Christ is a friend that loves at all times. He's a rock that no waters of sorrow, not even the water floods of death can move. 
He has been tried by the Old Testament saints and by the saints in all ages. He is a tried stone and one that can endure all the storms that beat around it and yet still be unmoved. Oh, hallelujah. He is a tried stone, but he's also a stone that tries those who come in contact with him. He's a trying stone that shall distinguish between the true and the counterfeit. And then he's a precious cornerstone. And the reason why God used that word precious before cornerstone is because it refers to the fact that the cornerstone was the most solid stone, the largest, the firmest block on which this superstructure was to rest. It was the cornerstone, the stone laid at the corner where two walls meet, connecting them. But it had to be the most solid, the largest, firmest, because this was the stone that the building would rest upon. Just to give you an example, uh, the Palestine Exploration Fund uh, they uncovered at the corners of Solomon's temple, they uncovered the foundation so stones of such enormous size and weight. The cornerstones were more than 38 feet long and they weighed about a hundred tons. Oh, do you see why God said precious cornerstone? And this is what Solomon's temple was resting on, these huge cornerstones. Not only that, but God said, a sure foundation. This foundation is a sure foundation, a well-founded one which will never give way. It's a rock on which the church is built and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. It's a sure foundation of faith, hope, peace, joy, comfort, and eternal happiness to all who build upon it. You know, in the, these days, people want to have certainty in their religion and what they're believing in their belief system. You know, nobody wants to have just a mere philosophical quest. Well, I'm on some mere philosophical quest. I really don't know what I believe. No, people want to be able to say, I know in whom I believe, especially when there are storms and troubles all around. They don't want to be palsy with doubt or quaking with fear. They want to know in whom they have believed. And God said, my foundation is a sure foundation. Then he Lastly, he went on to say, He that believeth shall not make haste. What did he mean by that? Shall not make haste. What he was saying is, Those who believe in what I lay in my foundation, they will not give way. They will not be afraid. They will not be stricken with panic. They will never haste and hurry. They will not be alarmed and have to flee to some place of safety. They will never have any cause of alarm. They'll not be moved when troubles come because they're founded upon the rock of ages, which is proof against all the storms and tempests. They'll not flee in hasty alarm. They'll not flee in sudden panic. They will not run scared. Oh, hallelujah. Who wouldn't want to base their life on this foundation? Other translation said, they'll never be stricken with panic, need never be shaken, will not be disturbed, will not act hastily, will not panic, will not worry. Oh, if your faith, if your life is founded on Jesus, then this should be your testimony. Matthew Henry said, here is a promise of Christ as the only foundation of hope for escaping the wrath to come. Now the wrath of God against the wicked is coming. The wrath of God is already on, on the wicked, but he is going to pour out his wrath on the wicked. And the only foundation of hope for escaping it is to hold on to this promise and let God lay the foundation of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. He that believeth shall not make haste. In our day, men are making haste. They're hurrying, hurry, hurry, bustle. They're driven 
on every turn but the man who believes in God and trusts in God he's saved from this restless worldly agitation of mind he doesn't have to run helplessly hither and thither when a strain comes upon him seeking for principles to sustain him he already has the principles and this man who believes is not full of nervous apprehension about the future of Christianity. We have rulers now, people in a leadership over America who want to wipe out Christianity in America. But if you are one of those who believes, you don't have to be full of nervous apprehension about the future of Christianity. You that believe that you have a protector always at hand in the season of emergency you don't have to run to and fro in search of help you never will know what it is to be scared by unexpected things this is what the promise is telling you god's promise is saying to those who believe you will not make haste you'll be collected in the midst of danger, confident in the face of difficulties, hopeful in trial, happy in affliction, steadfast in death. Oh, hallelujah. He that believeth shall not make haste. If you believe in this promise that God was speaking to Isaiah to give to Judah, and you rest your life, every area of your life upon it, you will not make haste. You'll not run to and fro in a hurry as men at their wit's end. You'll not be shifting hither and thither for your own safety, nor be driven to your feet by any terrors. You'll not be confounded when the days of storm threaten to overwhelm, because your confidence is in him who keeps the mind firm and preserves those who believe in him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is speaking to you today about the foundation of your life. I'm talking about the foundation of every area of your Christian walk today. That I'm asking you today, let this be a springboard. Let this message be a springboard and let the Holy Spirit examine you today. Let, open up the, the, the doors of your heart, every area. Let the Holy Spirit come in and show you if there is any place where you have made lies your refuge or your hiding under falsehood because the overflowing scourge, the judgment of God is coming. It's not if, it's not a matter of if, it's when it's coming. And those who are believers, those who have allowed God to lay in them for a foundation, the stone of Jesus, the tried stone, the precious cornerstone, and make your life a sure foundation, you will not make haste. You'll never have to worry, fear, or panic in those times. This is Connie Giordano coming to you live on Spreaker Radio. Let's pray. Father, I'm asking you today that this would be a springboard, that you would use this message and that from this day forward, that you would continue to speak to your people, that you would shine the light on every area of their life and show them areas that are not committed to the Lord Jesus, that the foundation is not in that area, that Jesus Christ is not Lord of that area. Show them any areas where they have made lies, their refuge, and their hiding under falsehood, trying to uh, hide from the things to come. And Lord, I pray for great comfort to come on your people. Peace, knowing that this promise God is saying, you don't have to be afraid of what's coming on this earth as long as you let me lay the foundation of Jesus Christ in your heart and life today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Until next time, be blessed of the Lord Jesus. Amen.